The Perimeter is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios. Speak Studios. Speak and be heard. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you by our official title sponsor, Mercedes-Benz of Spokane. Experience the best or nothing at Mercedes-Benz of Spokane with Dan Crowley and his exceptional team. They're located in beautiful Liberty Lake and his local family-owned dealership under Guy Automotive. Their staff prides itself on a personable and memorable experience from service to sales and will have you leaving the dealership feeling satisfied with a smile on your face all the way down the road. Back-to-back winners of the Best of the Best Civil Laurel Award. Receive invoice pricing on any new Mercedes-Benz in stock when you come in and mention the Perimeter Podcast. You can check out all their available inventory at SpokaneMercedes.com. As well, stay up to date on all things Mercedes-Benz via their Facebook and Instagram pages. Call them at 509-455-9100 to schedule your Mercedes test drive today. One. Welcome to the Perimeter Podcast with Adam Morrison, special guest, the Venezuelan vixen, <laughs> Juliana Pena, number six in the UFC uh, rankings right now, Bantam, correct? <sighs> number one in my opinion. Oh, there you go. I like that. <laughs> Confidence. Mount Spokane grad for all the Spokane listeners. Got a huge fight coming up August 7th for Amanda Nunez title fight. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Yes. Good, feel good to be back home. It does. It does. I was just uh, driving down uh, Division, and I'm like, oh, there's nothing, nothing like there driving down Division. Yeah, you stop by Zips, get some tartar sauce. Yeah, and stuff, corn dogs uh, but, and stuff. Um, yeah. Again, thanks for coming on. Um, you know, I usually start the shows with the non basketball people, like kind of how we met. Um, we met through a mutual friend, what five, six, seven years ago, or something yeah, yeah. like that. And uh, we used to have the same masseuse yep yeah so we'd always see each other every once in a while and For hang sure. out and stuff and i was always repping 509 you're a 509 uh gal obviously and, and doing well in the ufc and um so yeah that's how kind of we got connected and i really appreciate you coming on um you know because you guys are busy schedule and, <laughs> and and things like that what are you doing um you know for the listeners what are you doing back in spokane right now Right. Uh, so my head coach, Rick Little, he uh, is the promoter out at Northern Quest Casino, mm. and he's got a, a fight show, um, Conquest of the Cage. Oh, okay. And uh, so my training partner in Chicago is making his amateur debut. He's never fought before, and he's looking to get some experience. And I was like, oh, well, Rick has a fight show. So uh, he's flying over in a few hours. He'll be here, and I'm going to go pick him up, and then he's going to have the fight tomorrow night at Northern Quest, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to train for one day and then head back to Chicago on Monday. So, uh, quick question. Yeah. D- d- where do you fight out of when you when they announce you? Do you go to Spokane now? Uh, I think they say uh, fighting out of Spokane, Washington, by way of Chicago. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. Did you make sure of that? Yeah, absolutely. Good for you. I, I literally, when I'm driving down Division, I'm like, man, I am so like proud to be from Spokane. Like uh, I love Spokane. I love the 509. I'll rep it till I die. 509, uh, baby. Yeah, we always we always rooting for you. So, Thank um, you. you know, to get started, I always kind of like to go through people's backgrounds. So obviously I mentioned your 2007 Mount Spokane grad, you made your pro de- uh, pro debut in 2009. Did you play sports in high school? I did. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, I played all of them actually, whatever mm-hmm. season it was, I played, I played, um, soccer, basketball, volleyball. I played uh, softball, yeah. um, all varsity or you like, lettering? no, actually see, that's the thing. Um, for some reason it, <laughs> I felt like the other kids had like parents that would like put them in club, you know, club yeah, this, club that. I, my parents mm-hmm. literally just were like, whatever the season was, and then just go and the bus will bring you back. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? The so, bus, yep. Yeah. So I, I feel like I, 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 I want to say this with like as much love as possible. I was always on C squad. For some reason, like I was always, and (laughs) I was like the one on the team that was so competitive that was like wanting to win all the time. And then I was grouped together with people that like didn't care and didn't want to win. And so I would always have this like massive frustration. Like, why am I always getting overlooked? Like, I (laughs) I really care. I'm trying to win. I want to play. I play my heart out. Um, I just think that I didn't have like that extra, you know, uh, attentive eye or a coach that really cared that like actually was like, this girl's actually trying. She, Mm -hmm. she really wants to do something. So yeah, I was always, yeah, I played all the sports, but I was never on, uh, on varsity. You you always had a competitive bug then, right? Absolutely. So getting into fighting, obviously there's no like girls wrestling or whatever at that time, right? right? So you started your pro debut was in 2009. Like, how did you get like interested into MMA? Because it's a big leap for, um, you know, at that time period. And correct me if I'm wrong, speaking out of ignorance, but I think 
uh, it wasn't as prevalent for or women to, to be interested in that sport or have the opportunities. Can you walk us through how you got interested in it? Was it a competition thing? Was it like, ah, this is kind of fun. I'm going to kick the shit out of somebody. You know what I mean? Like, how'd you get interested in it? So uh, I'm the baby of four, and I have a very large family. Mm-hmm. So any family gathering, even in my own household, I was always getting the tail end of a lot of beatings. I have an <laughs> older brother who's, like, obsessed with WWE, and he was knocking us around all the mm-hmm. time. So I, I grew up aggressive, but I didn't really know where to channel that. Yeah. And I always grew up super tough. But, like, I people would always be like, don't mess with her. She'll kick your ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, I didn't know if I could do it or not, yeah. you know? So I had no idea what MMA was. I had no idea what the UFC was. Um, back then it was rare. Even still right now, it's pretty rare. Um, but back then, especially very rare. Um, I was serving lanes at, uh, Lilac lanes at like, yeah, I was Shout out to the North side bowling alley. That's right. Um, Lilac lanes. I was the, uh, what is it called? Nighttime. I was a graveyard server Mm -hmm. in the casino and I had graduated high school. I didn't have like that thing there, you know, they're like, parents were like you're going to college you know what I mean or like find you know you're going to be a doctor like I didn't have that you know avenue um so my sister invited me to a woman's cardio kickboxing class I think I was like 18 19 years old after I graduated high school and uh, she's like you want to join this cardio kickboxing class with me and I'm like yeah I need to lose some weight so I I joined the cardio kickboxing class and my coach was like uh you know wow who taught you who taught you how to box and I'm like no nobody Nobody. yeah (laughs) and he's like well who, who taught you how to punch I'm like you, you just did. Mm. And he's like, you're a natural, you know? And so I remember at that point, you know, when I was living with my parents, like washing the dishes and I'd have the little TV on the side while I'd wash the dishes. And if it was like MMA, I didn't know what it was. I'd flip the channel. I remember vividly flipping the channel. Anytime it was on Spike TV, I'd flip the channel. I had no idea what I it was. About Spike TV. Yeah. That was awesome. Anyway. Uh, yeah. And so um, when I joined the women's cardio kickboxing class, they encouraged me to stay after for the MMA and the jujitsu. And, mm-hmm. and then I kind of figured out what fighting was, but I couldn't pay the dues for the gym I was broke I was paying rent as an at an apartment I I thought I knew it all I I moved out I'm like I'll show you guys you know so I moved out I was paying rent and uh, I joined this cardio kickboxing class I couldn't pay the dues and so he's like okay you can mop the mats and clean the gym vacuum the gym and stuff so that's what I was doing to to pay the dues to train Um, and then he was like you don't pay anything you got to fight and I'm like what do you mean he's like well you're not paying so you know you got to fight on my fight card and I'm like okay who who is my head coach rick yeah so rick yeah so he was like you got to fight and so i ended up fighting on his fight card at uh i think there's a bowling alley and slash like half casino out in uh, off of sprague i don't remember what it's called but uh which one was that ac deuce or if annie fanny's was it that one no it wasn't annie fanny's um players and spectators players and spectators i'm a degen gambler yes you're a degenerate no (laughs) i'm just kidding (laughs) uh players and spectators uh was the one that i did my first amateur fight on Mm -hmm. and i remember swinging for the fences for all three rounds like the girl stole my lunch money. Like just <laughs> literally like any pent up aggression I've ever had in my entire life. I took it out on that poor chick. Um, and that's how I got my start. Um, yeah. and Rick, my trainer was like, if you stick with this, you know, you can make a career out of this. Yeah. And I didn't believe him. I was going to college full time. I was serving full time and I was trying to fight full time. Yeah. And so at that point it was just like, y- you got to pick, do you want to yeah, be the best? A, yeah. yeah. You want to be the best server in the world. You want to be the best fighter in the world. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? So did you fall? You, so obviously you fell in love with it. Did, would it have mattered if you lost that first fight, if the love would have been there? Or were you just like the competition, beating the shit out of somebody, pent up <laughs> anger, whatever? Was that kind of like, hey, man, this is the, the niche for me. Like, yes, I love this shit right away. Well, when I started to like learn stuff, I was like, this, this is what I should have been doing. Yeah, like all, you know, there's parents that put their kids in like Taekwondo or karate or anything like that. Like yeah. I threw my very first punch at 19 years old, not ever knowing anything about the sport or martial arts. I didn't even know what martial arts was. Yeah. That was like my very first time. So if I would have lost, I think I probably, <laughs> I probably would have not been yeah. as in love with it. I probably would you know, my confidence would have went down into the toilet. Mm -hmm. Um, But once I got that first fight under my belt, I'm like, this is what I should have been doing. This is when they say, find your passion and it'll never feel like a day of work again. I'm like, this is what I'm passionate about. This is, and you know, it, it, it literally engulfed my entire life. Mm -hmm. Literally. Like I remember going on road trips all the time. Every weekend I was going on a road trip, going to Canada, going to, you know, Oregon, going to Mm -hmm. Idaho, going all these places in the Pacific Northwest, going to fight cards and, and, you know, watching fights all the time. So it literally, it it completely took over my life. Well, it's a high level sport. And, you know, obviously I was a professional athlete and you understand that now, but it has to be your main focus. You can't half-ass it, no matter how good, talented, natural, like you mentioned you are. 
you have to be all in completely. Um, so yeah, that's very interesting that it just automatically like clicked for you. And now you're in a chance for the title fight, which we'll talk down later, the yeah. road. but it's crazy how the world works like that. Like one opportunity. What if you didn't, you know, you don't decide to go to that cardio kickboxing class. Right. And like I said, what if you lose yeah. that first fight and then, you know, that's domino effect is what I'm saying. So right. next, uh, let's segue into ultimate fighter 18. Yeah. Okay. So it's documented and to the listeners don't know, you're the first ever whim- woman to yeah. win that show, which is pretty amazing. Right. Can you go through that experience? I'm, I'm sure you've talked about it a lot, but can you go through that experience for our listeners of, you know, how did you get a part of it? And then being in like the fishbowl and yeah, I was going to say the alpha, but it, it's an alpha sports so with just being around a bunch of other alphas. Yeah. Like what was that like? Um, just in general. Okay. So at this point I have had, you know, X amount of amateur fights, X amount of pro fights. And I had, hold uh, on, and let me start. I, hold on. What do you get for like a, a amateur win? Just oh, let me tell the listeners okay. what you get. Okay. You get a three XL size Zion <laughs> t-shirt that you could pitch a tent in. And that's what you get. That's it. That's it. They don't even throw you like hundred bucks. Nothing. Nothing. Wow, yeah. Crazy. Amateur. Nothing. Yeah. For my first three amateur fights, I got a, a whopping total of zero. Ha- handshake and a smile. Good yeah, job. Yeah. On the back. Hey, <laughs> good job. Nice job. Uh, so, yeah, you get absolutely nothing as an amateur. Um, when I turned pro, actually, I got exactly like $1,500. And I was able, the quarter for SCC was $1,500. Oh, wow. There yeah. you go. So, literally, <laughs> for the first like three quarters of college that I took, um, well, I've, I've had, I have more than three quarters, but for the first like three quarters, the pro fights that I was winning was paying for the exact amount of the quarter for mm-hmm. school. So, I was putting myself through school. I had like just enough money to have, buy the book and buy the the classes um and then back to like that being all in I was serving I was uh going to school I was being a waitress and I had all my hand in all these baskets all Mm -hmm. these different baskets and and my coach again Rick's like listen like do you want to be successful I said yes of course I want to be successful you have to go all in on this you know you can't be serving and and um you know you got all this other stuff going on you know what I mean you have to you have to dive into this and so it wasn't until that point that I gave it my all into fighting that it took off. And, and mentally too as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And when it took off was right at the time that Dana's like, we're allowing women into the oh, UFC. That's, that's so awesome. And it was so cool because Rick's like, I told you, you know, yeah. like I told you. And I'm like, you were right. You were right. And so, um, but at that point I had, you know, X amount of pro fights already under my belt. And um, I had taken a loss. I took a loss to my hometown at Northern Quest Casino. And it was probably the most... Like you said, it, it killed me confidence wise. Mm. I, I quit. I got fat. I was like, I'm done. You know, it was my first loss ever. Yeah. I was like, I'm I'm never and doing this hometown, again. Like you hometown, said. Yeah, yeah. I got my arm broken, like literally dislocated. And I was like, I'm done. And then um he called me like a couple months later and was like, You're fighting at one twenty five in like seven days, you gotta cut weight. And I was like, Are you kidding me? <laughs> like I cut twenty three pounds to fight at one twenty five and I lost a hometown decision in Utah and I was like, I'm done. I'm literally done. Like, mm-hmm. I'm literally about to, like, pack up my bags and go live in a trailer with my boyfriend in Winnemucca, Nevada. <laughs> You're like, literally, that's what I was going to do. Like, I was on my way to Winnemucca when my coach was like, you are not leaving. And he, he wouldn't let me leave. Uh, so right after that, maybe like a couple weeks later, Dana White says that we're allowing women into the UFC. And, and yeah, because uh, he, he, he didn't want it for a long time. And yeah. then it was kind of rousy came in and then he looked at the dollar signs and right. made sense. But anyway, yeah. keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, women are a hot commodity in, in MMA and, yeah. uh, guys like to not guys. Everybody likes to see, you know, girl fights and, <sighs> Frick, we're like mama bears, you know what I mean? Like You can say fuck, by the way. Oh, you can I say it all the time, so like you don't have to say frick. You no. can say fuck. You can say it all you want. No, so my uh my like I really feel like women fight harder. They fight for, yeah. for more and, and they're gonna like gouge your eyeballs out at the end of the day. It's literally like mother nature and I saw women. the the last fight, the last one in Vegas. COVID with the girl that got the hematobin yeah. versus the Chinese girl, yes. I think. That Joanna was, Janjacek. That was one of the best fights, male or female, I've ever seen in my entire life. It was a standing ovation for like five minutes yeah, after me the too. fight. I thought it was a draw. Anyway. I really thought that too. I, I was, thought it was a draw. It was, that's literally one of my favorite fights ever. It was. They both just said, you know what, we're going to fucking stand up yeah. and beat the piss out of each other. And yeah. those girls beat the piss out yeah. of each other. And like I said, 
People stood up for five minutes. Yeah. And you know what? She did have a gigantic hematoma, but look at her now. She's fine. She's yeah. healed. And she's like a millionaire X times over. You yeah. know what I mean? It was so. such a good fight. But anyway, t- tell us, keep telling us about the, the Ultimate Fighter. Okay. Stuff. So Dana says, yeah, we're allowing you to get on the Ultimate Fighter. Rick bought my ticket down there and I tried out. Um, but I was already down there, actually, because Misha Tate was fighting uh, Kat Zingano. And the winner of that was going to be um, the new coach of the Ultimate Fighter. Oh, okay. So I had went down to Arizona to train with Misha and then we drove to Las Vegas um, the week of tryouts and I heard through the tailpipe that Dana was going to be at this one gym syndicate and so I I got over there I found a ride over to syndicate and I saw him in the corner and I walked right up to him and I said my name is Juliana Pena and I'm trying out for the ultimate fighter and I'm going to win the show. That's so cool. And that he is was so fucking awesome. Yeah. And he was like, shit, nice to meet you, you yeah. know? And so the next day was the tryouts and, uh, he had everybody go on the mats. And once, once they see that you can throw punches and throw kicks and stuff, they'll let you off the mats, mm-hmm. but they let everyone off the mats, but me and Dana kept me on the mats and he was watching, watching me go. And so uh, you try out every time you make it through the round, you're like a sigh of relief. You know what I mean? So yeah. I made it through the first round. I'm bawling hysterically. I can't believe that I made it through the first round. You know, I made it through the second round. Oh my God. I can't believe I made it through the second round. I'm crying. Third round. They say, now you're going in for the interviews. And so I went into this interview. I don't know. I was a server, like I told you here in, in uh, Spokane. I got in a fight with the busboy who was actually not a busboy. He's the cook. He used to be uh, one of my workers. One of my I was a supervisor at Papa Murphy's at one point. Oh, okay. So he worked underneath me, and I always had to send him home because the kid was a freaking nuisance. Mm-hmm. So when I started this new job at the Onion downtown, uh, he was my fry cook, and I was the expo. And so he, we were constantly fighting, constantly fighting, harassing me all the time, just throwing food on me all the time and one day he was like let's fight and I was like I've been waiting for this day dude like let's go I mean the kid's as tall as you like he's huge I went out there I got my eye swollen shut and 11 stitches in my left eye he beat the hell out of me and I remember walking into these interviews with Dana and they're like, so, you know, so t- you could take a, pun- I could take a punch. Yeah, no, yeah. I could, I for sure could take a punch. punch. Yeah. <laughs> I popped right back up. He dropped me. I popped right back up. He hit me again in the eye. I did dropped f- shit can his ass after this. Please <laughs> uh, say they did. No, actually they shit can me. And they said that I was a professional fighter and that I shouldn't have done it. So oh God. yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother can yeah, of worms. Exactly. I don't even want to go down yeah, that yes. road. But we, when we Dana won't. was in that interview, he was literally like, so, you know, like tell us something. And I'm like, I'm not afraid to fight men. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, I got, you know, I got beat up on the street. I'm like, but I fought him. I popped right back up. I swear to God. And they're like, this chick is crazy. They're like, you're in. And so I got on. Yeah, I got exactly. I got on the show. You're like, you're exactly what we're looking for. Um, So I got on the show and, um, you know, my training partners, Mike and Sam had been on the seasons uh, like a two seasons before. So uh, can you give us the connection with Rick? Yeah. Mike Chiesa and then Sam Cecilio, who, who I know, local guys. Right. Great fighters. Right. Can you just explain how that connection is real quick? Absolutely. So Mike, Kiesa, and me started exactly within one week of each other. Mm -hmm. Like, he started... Um, and then like that same exact week I came in and I started. So we started at the exact same week with each other. Sam Cecilia, uh, Mount Spokane, uh, yeah. graduate. He also dated my oldest sister at one point. I had a, I used to go kick it with Sam and get really drunk in college anyway. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. there's, trust me, we could go down that road yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... Because we all literally sick jitsu team versus freaking like Eastern Washington got in like this gigantic fight on Halloween and it was crazy. Anyways, <laughs> so um, Sam and Mike have been in uh, the same gym as me since since I very first started. And uh, Sam actually was one of Rick's original guys. So he started when Rick was in his basement in um Five Mile, Sam was one of those guys training in Rick's basement before he opened up on North Division. Mm -hmm. Um, And so those guys have been, like, they're my brothers. You know what I mean? Like, we've been fighting together for over 10 years. And um, they were on The Ultimate Fighter before me. So when I went to go get on the show, they were like, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. Uh, And they kind of gave me, like, a list of things that I needed to stick to and things that I needed to do to keep my head on straight. So when I went in there, I was all business. I was like, you're not my friend. You know, I have to sleep five feet away from the person that I'm going to have to fight tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I'm, don't even look at me. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, strictly business. And uh, I kept to myself. And, you know, I ended up winning the show. Did they, did they, I've always wondered with those reality shows, because obviously it's, it's ratings driven. And obviously they're trying to get good fighters, but they want a good show. Did you ever have producers be like, 
try to stir the pot and stuff like that? Or is that a myth? Because I know in certain shows they do, but not in a combat show, if that makes sense. I've always wondered, like, all right, if I'm a producer and you need, like, like you, you're like, hey, I'm just going to keep to myself. And they're like, well, fuck, we need some action or something. Do they, like, come up to you and be like, that girl said something about you, right, and try to stir the pot? or like They did start some stuff, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. um, I remember there was two incidences. One, where they had me and this other girl that we they knew that we didn't really like each other. Mm-hmm. They're, she's going to interview you. She's going to ask questions, and you're going to have the answers, or vice versa. Yeah. And, when I, and it's going to go on UFC.com. It never went on UFC.com. And I'm sitting here <laughs> asking her these questions, and I'm listening to her answers, and I'm like, bitch yeah Are you fucking kidding me yeah you know what i mean like oh <laughs> hell no you know what i mean and so then they, like internally like we got some problems yeah. you know um and then there was another instance where they said that i sold the matchups uh to the other team that i told the other team what the matchups oh. were and so they all turned against me everyone in the house and i'm like i felt so offended i'm a leo lion i'm loyal to the soil like for them mm-hmm. to like sit there call me a liar and say that i sold my own team out to the other team ronda rousey's team whom yeah. i don't even like i'm like i never did that I swear but everyone is like yes you did and I'm like I swear to God I didn't do it I swear you know and it ended up you know them looking like fools because I never did tell anybody and they gave you extra motivation then probably yeah oh and the kid just straight up admits yeah I know she didn't tell but I'm gonna I'm gonna act like she did anyways you know and so I had the whole house against me like they were so mean to me they were horrible Mm -hmm. horrible people like they actually, after I won the show, a lot of them ended up apologizing to me. Just and how they treated you. Yeah, for how they treated me. It, yeah. That's that that satisfaction um, of winning it, obviously. So with with them, you know, uh, treating you that way probably was a cherry on top. But, like, can you just walk me through, like, when you win that, you get how many fights guaranteed, X amount of dollars? How does it work? Yeah, you get, like, uh, a contract worth six figures and a Harley Davidson. Okay. So, I mean... And then a guaranteed guaranteed fight? Yeah, yeah. So, you get your guaranteed UFC fighter, Uh and uh, you have a contract, I think, maybe, like, six fights. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But the thing is, is, like, I feel like by being, like, uh, a woman and, like, rare, I've always been like, I'm not fighting for that. I want a different... I want something else, and I want more. You know what I mean? And so, I've, I've, I've literally always done that every single fight. I'm like... I want more. And they're like, well, we just signed a new deal with you last fight. I'm like, I want a new one. Yeah. And they're like, oh, fuck, okay. Do you guys have agents? We do, but I um, don't, I have a sponsorship agent. So okay. he only gives me sponsorships. I don't have like an agent to like go negotiate with me with Dana. Smart. Smart and not smart, you know, because when you get an agent, they are going to get you so much more of the pie, but then you got to split that pie with all these other Cause people. Because in my experience for like NBA, it's, you know, obviously the, the, the pay scale is different, but it's 4% max is what an agent can take from you in, on your contract. Now with the side stuff, like the sponsorship agents or yeah. endorsements, whatever you call it, that's between you and your agent. And yeah. it, I used to be contentious with my guy, uh, Mark Bartlestein. He's great. Yeah. But it, he'd fucking skim 20% off the top of that shit. And you're yeah. like, damn, man. You know, yeah. like that's... Um, so I've always wondered with fighters... Um, because I think, like you said, and, and if I'm speaking out of ignorance or uh, wrong, tell me, but I think, think an agent sometimes can get you to a different level and they forge relationships with upper management yeah. and they can get you in other spots. But then also if, you know, you want to get as much as you d- deserve, right. you can negotiate yourself if you get right. the right. Uh, See, deal, I, so. and I'm, I'm, I would say. I still don't feel like I'm getting what I deserve, but at the same time, I feel like I'm getting a more than a then, lot of other people. Other, yeah, okay, that um, makes sense. But with that being said, I have gotten myself every new contract, every pay bump, every dollar amount that I get, I have gotten myself with Dana. And there's a double-edged sword to that because when an agent's in there, they're the bad guy. You know, mm-hmm. now I don't have to look that's like the just, asshole. That's a good point. Um, Very good point. But to the flip side, they don't like dealing with that stuff. They don't want to deal no. with somebody who's hard to deal with they want to yeah. deal with somebody who wants to fight who's hungry who's a savage and who's ready to go i'll fight for free if you if i have to that's the type of people they want to deal with yeah. and so i go in there and i'm like i need more money yes i will fight and you know i will but i need more money and they're like all right we'll give it Do to you, you okay so if you don't want to answer this don't i don't want to put you in a you know don't bite the hand that feeds you Do you guys think you ever unionize um no i don't um I think it's too hard i think it is too hard to get yeah. all these fighters on the same page yeah 
I realize that it would be beneficial for all of us. Listen, if we all band together and we're like, we're not fighting until we get this mm -hmm. union done. Um, and, you know, Kobe actually came and talked to us as a keynote speaker um, when the company got bought out by WME, IMG. Kobe came in and he was like, y'all are stupid. Like, you need mm -hmm. to unionize. You know what That's I mean? Right, and just, yeah, just and like we were like, thing. yeah. And so there was like a girl, a big advocate for that. Her name is Leslie Smith. And, and she actually got shit canned because she was trying so hard to get it's us union. Unionized. And why I asked you with the context or the, the, the precursor to the question, because I don't want to put you in a spot, but it's yeah. it's the wise thing to do if you're a professional organization. You guys beat the shit out of each other. You, your bodies are on the line all the time, right. obviously. CTE, I can go through it. You, right. you already know that. Yeah. But like, you sit there and go... I deserve more. Right. I think Dana White, I don't know him personally, but he obviously runs a good business, seems like an excellent dude. Yes. But it's like some of these guys are like, how much did you make for that? And yeah. that's not a knock on them. Right. And I'm, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, put down somebody that doesn't make as much or didn't in the past. Right. But I'm just like, fuck me, you don't make more money, man. No, you know exactly. So no, and, and that's the that's the truth of it. So there's two flip sides. First, let me just be clear. Love Dana White. That man has always taken care of yeah, me. He seems like an he's awesome a stand-up guy. Anytime yeah. I've ever had a problem, I mean, I remember I got arrested here in Spokane, and, and their lawyers were on it. They got me bailed out. They took care of everything. Mm -hmm. Got it expunged off my record. Like Dana has helped me so many times in the past, and I ha I got nothing but love for that guy. Yeah. But I will also say that, in my opinion, I feel like fighters definitely deserve to get m paid more money. Mm -hmm. With that being said, there's a flip side of that. Nobody's putting a gun up to your head. True. Nobody's being like, you have to fight. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like your choice. And if you don't want to fight, guess what? We got 10 Joes well, off the street that will do it for free. I was just going to say, and, and this is not taking away from the skill set that fighters have. And you understand that. But uh, it's easier to find guys and, and, and gals to go beat the shit out of each other than professional basketball players. Exactly. 300-pound linemen. Sure. Football. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. So, like, the leverage aspect for you guys is a little bit different, I think. Um, so yeah, thanks for answering that. And, and again, I didn't want to put you in a spot. No, no. I mean, I, I'm on both sides, you know, yeah, like I, yeah. I'm happy with what I'm making, but I definitely feel like I should get more. Yeah. But with that being said, you know, um, no one is forcing me to do anything and, uh, I have the free will to be like, you know, no. Yeah, no, exactly. That's cool that you negotiate your own stuff though, though. Like yeah. it's smart. I, I respect people that do that in business, um, and can kind of control their own brand in that aspect. Like you said, agents are good, but if you, how much do you think branding for women's fighters is, is a thing? It's, it's huge. And it's something that I'm definitely dropping the ball on uh, big time. You know, I think that like with women fighters, and this is going to sound probably piss some people off, uh, some feminists and stuff, but like sex sells, you know what I mean? That's and true. people want to see uh, women fighting just as much as they want to see girls in freaking tank tops and short shorts fighting, you yeah. know what I mean? And no, it's, it's a real aspect, and you're exactly right. Go it, ahead. And it sucks to say that, um, uh -huh. but... And that's where I'm dropping the ball. Like I said, I could definitely have more risque pictures out there. I could definitely be, you know, showing like a lot more of myself mm -hmm. in that aspect. But for me, there's some things that I won't compromise on and I'm not trying to be like that. But here's the thing. I'm not going to hate on another girl for doing that. Yeah, you get know, your money. get your money, boo boo. Yeah, Frickin' yeah. if you got to, you know, take some pictures in sexy lingerie, do your thing. I'm happy for you. Yeah. You know, it's not exactly the avenue that I'm um, going to go down at this time. Um, and I definitely think that I could because if I did, that my content would go up, my followers would go up, my yeah. brand would go up, more sponsors would be hitting me up. But I'm just kind of like, I'm I'm struggling between trying to live a nice, quiet, private life with still getting money and still being a UFC fighter mm -hmm. and having to push myself out of that boundary of not having any privacy and basically exposing my entire life to everybody, which is what people want to see, well, which is what I'm not willing to do. Yeah, because you it's, it's interesting with individual sports athletes like yourself. You know, obviously, you know, in my situation, you know, playing in the NBA and then uh, you're attached to brands that are already established. Obviously, you can add your personal stuff to it, but you already have the brand. Um, you guys are your own entity. Right. And I, so I've always wondered um, how much do you want to give up of yourself? And I thank you for explaining that. But also, do you what's the line for you personally but also you want to gobble up a hungry, hungry hippo with the dollars, man, because right. you're, you're, it's a finite time. You understand that as an right. athlete. Um, it, there's only an amount of time when Juliana Pena can go out there and fight right. in big-time fights. Yeah. Right? And and that's what kind of like where I'm at right now where it's like I got this title fight and there's these brands that it's like that's kind of off-brand for me. Mm -hmm. But 
they're going to be paying me a lot of money. Yeah, and so I think I'm going to have to go out there and be like, check out this joint. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's awesome. And I use it for recovery. I'm not going to be smoking it, but I'm yeah, going yeah. to be like, show, hey, if you have anxiety, you have trouble sleeping, pain, whatever. Take it's this. all legal now. So I know. and But I know. But it's still like you're right. You're right. The brand, you know, like right. I'm a mom, you know what I mean? I and agree. so and so that's the struggle because I am going to have to come to a, a, a road here mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to start putting out that content. And it yeah. kind of sits like it's going to be a little like not that classy. But at the same time, it's like, fuck classy, man. I'm a fighter and I need to get paid and I have to jump through this window. That's this big. Yeah. I have this amount of time to get through here. Finite and you time. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I got to get my money, you know. No, I respect Sorry that. for the these people that aren't cool with that, you know? Well, you're not going to please everybody. Exactly. And you're the one that's grinding your ass off right. and, and going out there and, um, you know, putting yourself on the line. And, and you mentioned you're a mom. You got, you know, now you got responsibilities besides yourself. Right. Um, so I totally agree. It's like you got to be able to make a decision and uh, put yourself out there. You've always been kind of, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've kind of been an introvert. Like, have you had to, like, because for me, when I was coming out, I was not a fan of cameras, interviews, yeah. didn't have a good, you know, yeah. self-image and I just yeah. didn't feel comfortable. Did you have to work on that Absolutely. For, for, for UFC to and, promote yourself? And, and I still am working on that because mm -hmm. I know for a fact I could be doing so much more, but because I'm not this person that like dies to be in front of the limelight. Yeah, it's, that it's a hard thing to do. It to is. Get over with. Yeah. Because a lot of people think that I am that way, that I'm just dying to, you know, be in the, but I'm actually like, I'm cool with like not being like yeah. that. I just want the work to speak for itself. You know what I mean? I would be so cool if I didn't have to do anything other than just showing up on fight night and actually having to fight and, and do the work. And then after that geez, being like, yeah. what up? You know what I mean? <laughs> but in the meantime, there's so many things that I'm going through in my mind and physically and mentally, emotionally that like, having to do these interviews or having to do this and that or the other, it's like, it's a chore, it's a job. And it's the part of the sport that I, I do not like, but it's the part of the sport that I have to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I cannot have the luxury of saying no. I cannot be like, no, I don't want to do that. I have to do it. Mm -hmm. I have to take these opportunities. I have, I, I can't say no, you know, I have to say yes, because like we said, we're trying to get the most money and I'm trying to get most eyeballs to be watching this fight. Yeah. You know, the more eyeballs that are watching, the better for me. Yeah. So it's, it's a double edged sword, honestly, because I don't like to the cameras and all that kind of stuff, but it's something that it's it comes with the sport. And the one thing that prepped me for that was the ultimate fighter. Because that's, that's a good point. Yeah, they're constantly following you around. You're going to the bathroom. There, there's cameras in your yeah. face. You, you know, you you want to talk to somebody. There's a camera in your well, face, and they're looking for quote unquote embarrassing mo the TV moments. Yeah, and it, a lot of times you don't mean to do it. You know, I was just, you know, on the previous show that will air before this, and uh, people understand is I was just on a live stream with Barstool. Yeah, and I kept telling myself like, all right, don't pick your nose. Yeah. Don't scratch your balls. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can't imagine that being the whole fucking time for yeah. a period of time. And you're like, I'm going to beat the shit out of this girl. Right. Because I want this money. I yeah. want this opportunity. So, yeah, I bet you it was at first where you're like. Yeah. And people are like, oh, my gosh, you sound so great. You know what I mean? I'm like, you have no idea how long it's taken <laughs> me to, like, even appear this comfortable. Yeah, you know no, what I, I feel mean? you. I'm the, I was the same way. And I, I, I you know, I knew you before, so I yeah. kind of had that inclination. So uh, thank you for sharing that yeah. um, because it's, you know, it, it, the overlying theme of, you know, this last part of this conversation was brand. Yeah. And you have to be able to brand yourself right. in an individual sport. Um, right. All right. Let's segue into 2014. Yeah. I tore my ACL in my, my second year in the league, missed yeah. the whole season. What was that injury like for you? Because it, from what I read, I mean, it wasn't, usually it says a ACL and I'm going, fuck, MCL, LCL, <laughs> meniscus. Like when that happened, obviously the pain aspect, but what was your mindset like? Because I know what my mindset like was like. It's a dark time. Oh. It's fucking awful. Horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. And in that sport, um, you know, I think people probably target. Yeah. Right. So like, what was your mindset right away when it happened? Like I'm done. Uh, yes. Um, but before we get into the 2014, we got to take it back to like, I think 2011, 2012, okay. where I tore my other one too. Oh shit. I didn't know you were double time. Yes. Yikes. So it's, it's, I had went through it already on my left, but oh. not as severely. But you already went through a oh, whole man. Yeah. But the one on the right was so bad. 
like you were compensating for it too though right was yeah that, was that why it tore or was no it just no it spot? tore you know so I, I already talked about getting uh into that fight where dana had to bail me out of jail mm -hmm. i got in a fight um me and my homeboy and that homeboy is the one that i actually uh tore my knee with oh, and shit. we hadn't talked to each other until that time like Ooh. when he tore my knee and then years later i think maybe two or three years later um is when we're getting in this bar fight mm -hmm. like we literally hadn't spoken the entire time like he hurt me i never spoke to him again and we met up on the street it and was it was like, site, like Tom yeah, and it Jerry. Was, yeah it was like <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry no i'm sorry oh my oh, god let's love okay. each other we're friends again and then boom we're getting in a fist fight with all these other people on the street and so it was weird that happens it was like the biggest news ever for me was dana white saying leave that gym now she just got mauled by a bear in that gym mm -hmm. with that kid and then the second headline is she's getting arrested and i'm getting arrested <laughs> with that kid i was like what are the odds that the two times that i meet the headlines is with the same fucking same kid. kid yeah exactly but no so it was really bad that time i tore four out of five ligaments on my Fuck, knee man. and um if i wouldn't have had uh, the, as great of a surgeon as I did, mm -hmm. I would have for sure felt like I was done. Yeah. Um, my surgeon was so confident. He did Kobe Bryant. He did a lot of the LA Lakers. He uh -huh. did uh, George St. Pierre, John Jones, Ronda Rousey, Kazangano. The list goes on and on. Yeah. He's like the who's who of like sports as far as fixing knees and stuff goes. Who is it? His name's Dr. Kavitney. Oh, okay. And he's in LA. Okay. Amazing guy. Very uh, uh, confident, knowledgeable, great doctor. And he was like, you're gonna be fine. He's like, it's so hard to hear that though. Oh, I know. Happens, well, like, he was so confident, and I was like, this guy says I'm gonna be fine. And he made my lines really thin, and he's like, I made them real thin, so when you're done fighting, you can still walk on the catwalk. And I'm funny. just like, oh my gosh, guy. He was so confident, and he was like, had you torn all five, I probably would have said, you're it's done. not, yeah, you're not gonna fight again. He's like, but you we only tore four out of five, so you're good. You're still good. <laughs> but that amount of rehab for that was way more vigorous than my other one because yeah. I only tore two on the other knee. Mm -hmm. So to tear four out of five, I, I had to attack that rehab as vigorously as I would a fight camp to, to get inside the octagon. Yeah. And so I was there diligent on my rehab with my knee um, every single day. So did you... Um did he do cadaver or, or like hamstring or what do you do for your ligaments? No. Do you remember? Yeah, he did not do a cadaver. And I remember running into Lorenzo Fatita, the old UFC owners, and they were like, well, how'd they do it? And I'm like, they used my own. He was like, I wish I would have known. I would have told you to do a cadaver. <laughs> He's like, it's... I, I, mine was my own. Everybody yeah. said, don't do a cadaver. Yeah, don't because it hurt. Is. Well, no, it hurts so much more when you do your own versus a cadaver. Well, yeah, but you want something that's in your body, and you don't know right. who the fuck... Yeah. With this guy's lifestyle or gal's no. lifestyle yeah. before. Yeah. So I'm like, can I get somebody that can jump like this <laughs> high? Yeah, no, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, so I want the most super athletic, you know, yeah. hamstring you can find. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I wish. So were you like, do you have to jump on the CPM machine? Did you remember that thing? The constant progressive motion when you lay in bed and it just goes up and down. Did you ever have to do that? One? Uh, I, I don't know. Is that the one that measures the pressure of how much like strength you have? Uh, in there? And if you don't know, then you didn't have to use it. But no, yeah. I have had to do like some bed that goes up and down like that. But I yeah, don't, I don't it just keeps the knee going. I was just going to share, you know, go sob, for it. What sob, happened? No, it was what, sob how'd you do for you? Well, it was ACL. I, I closed out in a preseason game and uh, ended up being one of my uh, friends when I got traded to L.A. Popped it. I knew the injury. If I look back now, I heard it. Going into my sophomore year playing for Team USA USA Basketball, and I hurt my quad in the last game of that qualifier, but it was in the summer. So I took like three weeks off, didn't rehab, didn't need to, but it was like a pull. So then thinking back, I had two years where I always compensated on the other side. Yeah. And then just weakened it. I did a simple closeout. It was an event. And it, you know, I didn't twist or anything, and it snapped. And like I said, when I looked back, I go, I didn't properly rehab that knee before that quad. So then I was always compensating with my body and then finally gave out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I did it, I mean, I was crying like a baby yeah. in, in the locker room. It's, it's the worst. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, it's dark because yeah. you're, you know, and then you have to wait like two weeks to get your surgery. So you're mm -hmm. just, and then it starts to feel good. You're like, fuck, I'm fine. Yeah. Like for me, I could yeah. bend it and shit. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, I'm fine. I fucked this. Yeah. But, uh, so, you know, you return, what, a year later after that, about that? I think about, like, 15 months total, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? To, to me, to have one knee surgery and to come back, I, I was pretty happy about that. To have a second one and tear that many and to come back and still win, mm -hmm. to me, it was like a, it was a feather yeah, in I was my just cap. Gonna, I like, was going to talk about you. You started UFC uh, Fight Night 63 and you came back. Did you take that... Uh, 
fight? Was that the fight you took off a of, like late or something like that, or was it planned? But like, I want to know as an athlete, it took me mm, six months from being cleared to being fully trusting your leg. How long did that take you as a fighter to fully go, okay, or are, are you the type, and it seems like you're the type, obviously, mm-hmm. that you're just like, fuck it, if it snaps again, whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, I felt strong. I felt like it was stronger than my other one, and so I... You, so you trusted it right away? No, not right away. Hell okay. no. Uh, it took, like, nine months of, like, straight babying and yeah. vigorous work for me to be able, like, I can do this again. Yeah. You know, um, but for a long time, I was like, it's over. It's absolutely over. Mm-hmm. Like, my career is done. Well, like. Because you hear horror stories, you know, like, NFL players don't even get these type of injuries and come back from them. You know, when yeah. they get these, it's like, they're done. They're, their career is over. Well, you well know? and then also, like, what if you plan on that leg and kick or whatever? Yeah. And then, like, if I'm an opposing fighter, it's like when the NFL or uh, hockey does. Yeah. They just say lower leg injury. Because yeah. they don't want anybody to know where the fuck it's at. Like, yeah. if I'm a fighter, like, oh, you hurt your knee? Yeah. Here comes a bunch of kicks. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that, that ever concern you? Can you, can you guys wear protect- any protective gear on that? Like, no braces, obviously, but can no. you wear, like, a knee pad? Um, Do they not allow that? No, And these no. are dumb. No, it's, it's okay. You, you know can't. You, I think the only thing you can wear is, like, around your ankles, which oh, okay. used to be banned, and then they made it okay again. Mm-hmm. Um, I always felt constricted when I put a knee pad on. Oh, like okay. a knee brace. I always felt like I could feel more shifting than if I wasn't wearing anything. Like oh, okay. I felt constricted and I'm like, <gasps> it's going to go. It's going to go. Like I can feel it. So I never wore braces because I just always felt like more constricted. And then mentally too, I'm trying to like act like I don't have any problem and act like I have no injury. So if I put a knee brace on, you know, then I'm going to be like, oh, I'm injured. You know what I mean? And I don't That's want true. that mentality to sink in. You know what I mean? It's like... I, I can't afford to be thinking that I'm hurt, you know, especially mm-hmm. when you're going into a fight and you need to be a solid, you know, piece of war machine, you know, Whip like, ass, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I'm not cock diesel and you, ready to fucking go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't be like, I am cock diesel, but I do have this knee brace. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Say, it took me a while to, 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 to get over it. It really did yeah. mentally. Like, yeah. And it, you know, my, my knee was repaired solid, a solid guy out of Charlotte. Just, you know, highly successful, same story. Yeah. All these athletes on the East Coast. Yeah. These, you know, and ACLs, and it wasn't as bad as yours. Nowadays, doctors can do them in their sleep. Oh, I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but he's like, oh, you're fine. Just get over it. And, and yeah. it's like, dude, like every time I jump to go for a jumper, but like in the pain, I'm like, fuck, here it goes. Yeah. Um, so and that's, yeah. that's one thing he told me. He's like, by the time you actually have to worry about it, we'll be living on the moon by then. <laughs> and I'm like... All right. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, that's the confidence that he had. Like, he was just like, well, don't worry about it. He's like, well, I'm like, well, what about a knee replacement? He's like, by the time you're going to need to do that, we'll be living on the moon. Yeah, we'll have, we'll yeah, have, we'll have bionic knees. Exactly. And all that shit, so. it's all, the ad- technology is going to advance so much. Like, he's like, don't sweat the small stuff. So you come back from that, and you yeah. obviously win uh, that, that, that fight night 63. Yeah. You fight three, f- three fights until your announcement, right? Yeah. Uh, was that. Obviously, you're excited to be a, a, a parent. Yeah. But, like, you make momentum and then it stops again. Like, w- when that happened, when you became pregnant, were you like, all right, uh, I'm done with fighting? Yeah. What no. What was your mindset? Okay. That? So, let me tell you. Um, I hadn't lost in the UFC. I, I won all my fights in the Ultimate Fighter. I had mm-hmm. a knee injury that took me out. I came back, I won all my fights after having a knee injury, and I was on top of the world. Like, yeah, no, nobody else it. in the UFC has this record. Yeah. Literally, nobody. I'm the only one. Yeah. Um, and I want to fight for the title. Mm. After every win, when I won the Ultimate Fight, I want to fight for the title. When I came back from knee injuries and won three in a row, I want to fight for the title. It was like falling on deaf ears. Nobody's listening to me. Nobody yeah. cares. It's like, shut up, work harder, do more. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm-hmm. well, who else? You know what I mean? There's yeah. girls that are 0-1-2 getting title getting, shots. Getting chances. There's, that, yeah. gr- there's girls that literally beat a girl that I beat, and and now she's getting a title shot. Like, what do I got to do? You know what I mean? Like, this is ridiculous. You yeah. know, like, I'm the only one with this undefeated record here, and I'm not getting a title shot. Like, oh, one more, one more, one more. They always want you to fight one more. Yeah. So they had me fight against Valentina, and uh, I took that, and I lost. That was my first fight, loss in the UFC. Mm-hmm. That killed me. That killed me. Remember how I said, like, I was dead after I lost in my hometown? Yeah. It happened again. It happened again where I was like, my life is over. Like, I was, talk about dark place. I was in a super dark place, Mm -hmm. and I was like, my life is over. Well, I got to cut back a little bit, because right before I was going to fight Valentina, I was training in Chicago, 
I met this dude. He came up to me and I was like, wow. He was like, you want to go on a ride along? He's a police officer. I'm like, man, I hate police, but I'll go wherever you want to go. <laughs> like I, I literally like whatever you want to do, I'll go baby. Like so hot. <laughs> and so the thing is, is like all my life growing up, especially being arrested, I've always been like anti-police. But then once I got on the flip side of like what police are about, and what they have to deal with, I'm like, okay, they got my respect. Yeah, yeah. So I met this guy and uh, I'm like, well, I got to go back home. And so I came back to Spokane and less than two weeks later, he flew over here. We packed up all my stuff in, in the truck and we drove it all the way to Chicago and I moved to Chicago like that. I oh, left, wow. left my head coach. I'm like, I'm in love. And they're like, no, no. I'm like, don't tell me nothing. Like, <laughs> I know it all. You know, it's one of those I know it all moments. So. So uh, I fall in love with this guy. I have the biggest fight of my entire life. Literally, like this, this is going to be determined who fights for the title. And uh, I take a loss. And I'm like, and that time that I was training and living with him and getting to know this guy, he's like, when are we going to have kids? You know, and I'm just like, bro, like I'm just, just trying to, yeah. yeah, like I'm <laughs> trying to stack my chips. What are you and talking I'm, about? Yeah, have kids. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely not. Well, once I took that loss, I'm like, my life is over. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, might as well have kids now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And less than a month I was pregnant. Oh, okay. So it's like the things that people, pa- oh, and we got engaged too. So the things that people pack into like five year relationship or sometimes, you know. You guys were on hyper two speed? Months, two months, literally two <laughs> months. Uh, and get, moved into his house, got pregnant, got engaged, like all within two months. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you can imagine, fast forward to how that went. It was like, yeah, yeah like falling in love and then the honeymoon was over. Um, I had a baby and the baby still is like, the best thing that has ever happened to me. Oh, she's so beautiful and she's so cool. Like she's like the coolest kid. Um, but unfortunately the relationship, you know, didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And once I gave him the baby, it was like, I no longer existed. It was like, thanks, got my kid. I'm out of here, you know? And so I didn't want to, I didn't want to get it. I just wanted to talk about, well, I, uh, what uh, I'm trying to segue into, um, you know, I, I became a parent and it's the best thing in the world. Uh huh. But I still have so much more to do. Yeah. So you're, how long did you take off after having your daughter? It was weird. I would say probably the same amount of time, like maybe 15 months, like yeah. the same amount of time. I, and I, I, I'm probably give or take a few months or maybe more, maybe less. But I came back after having a baby, I, I want to say around 15 months. And, you know, there's women that pop the baby out and, you know, six weeks later, they're already fighting. For mm-hmm. me, it was like. I always knew that I wanted to be a mom, which is why I didn't have a problem with being pregnant. Um, And I wanted to enjoy that time with her. I wanted to like absolutely soak in every ounce and every moment that I could. I have three kids, as you know. You don't get those moments back. You don't get them back. And they're only so small for such a short amount of time. You know, what do they say? The days are long, but the years are short. And and I was like, I do not want to be this mom that is like in such a rush to get back. Like, I want to enjoy this time with my baby. And so I took, I I definitely took my time. Well, that's good. That's good because you obviously understand the importance and you wanted to be a mother, but you understand understand the importance of establishing that well in, in establishing that bond with your kid because you can't get that back right um especially at a young age um and then you put your career uh, to the side and didn't let that be your main focus but then understood on the back side i can always come back to this and kick ass like you are so yeah um, and that's th- off to you for having that mindset for real. Thank you. And and there was the other thing too, is like, there's more important, there's other things outside of the octagon, mm-hmm. you know, there's other life outside of the octagon. It doesn't yeah. have to just be all fighting and you can come back from this. And obviously not like when you're 40, you know what I mean? Yeah, but no, you're, I, my, my Dana, he loves babies. Sean Shelby, they love babies. They're literally like, do it. They're, they were so happy for me. They were so, um, like proud and, and accepting and, and encouraging. And they're literally like, Juliana, fighting is going to be here when you're done. You know, mm-hmm. you're, you're 27, 28 years old. Like it's fine. Like yeah. have your baby, enjoy your baby and come back when you're ready. And so I came back, I took a short notice fight on two weeks. Yeah. I was just going to say it was a, uh, the UFC, th- ESPN plus 13. Yeah. What's the chick's name? Beat Nico. Nico Montano. Montano. So she won yeah. the ultimate fighter after me. Oh, so then you were, it was the battle of, the it was a battle of who's the baddest <laughs> ultimate fighter. But the thing is, is that she won a belt. She was, she was the world champion. Mm-hmm. So when her season ended, she, she was the world champion at 125. And then I believe they stripped her of her belt, and then she moved up weight class to one thirty five. Why they strip her? What happened? Just she didn't want to fight Valentina. Oh, okay. And so she moved up to one thirty five. I took the fight on two weeks, and um, yeah, you've done that so many times in your career. Just like fuck it, I'll show up. Let's go. Let's fight. Yeah, exactly. That's you either know how mindset. to fight or you don't. Yeah, that's you know what mindset. I mean? 
Um, so I took that fight on two weeks and, um, I won and, you know, she hadn't tasted defeat, you know, Mm -hmm. she was just off of, you know, four wins in a row off off of the ultimate fighter. And so to me to get that win on short notice against a former world champion and against a a girl who hadn't lost, I was like, hell yeah, I still got it. I'm back bitches. What's up? You know, I called to fight the champ then too. And they're like, no, 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 no. One more, one more. (laughs) That's amazing. Like, you know, to, to come off. Um, multiple times to have quote unquote comebacks and, you know, to be in the position that you are now with the title fight coming up is, uh, is pretty special. So, yeah, because there's been other moms that have, you know, fought and not been able to win yeah. and, no, you know, other people it. with knee injuries that have come back and not been able to I win. Know, so to come back from a knee injury, to come back from motherhood and still win at the highest level to me, I'm like, I don't want to like toot my own horn. Toot your fucking yeah, own a horn. Beep, beep. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. No, it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, you know, cause we're, we're doing the, uh, my research for the show, obviously I knew you, but I had to yeah. dive in a little bit. I'm like, fuck man, she's had some adversity. Yeah. And she's came back every fucking time. I love that shit. Yeah. I, I really do. Like, uh, especially being from the five when I was like, yeah. fuck yeah. Like underdog. Know, people, give, people give Spokane some shit sometime and you're like, yeah, all right, motherfucker. I'm going to show you what be, Spokane's yeah. all about. I'm going to show you what the five Oh nine's about. Exactly. So let's talk about your Nunez fight coming up. Yeah. You know how, obviously you're confident. Um, she's like one of the greatest of all time. Sure. Right. Um, when you go into these fights, are you, you watch a lot of tape, I assume. Yeah. Um, do you and Rick sit there and go, and then you bring outside forces? Do you contact people she's fought before and try to get tidbits? Is that is is UFC like that type of industry where you share film or whatever? Yeah. Or share information? Yeah. yeah. So just kind of give me, because we're all kind of layman's here for UFC. Yeah. W- leading up to a fight, are you grinding film? And then going, okay, this is a weakness perceived that she has, yeah. and we're going to work on this. And then do you self-scout? Yeah. So we um, we watch a lot of tape. We we know what we need to work on, mm-hmm. and then we set that theme um, for the camp. And then we do. We bring in bodies. We bring in whoever we need to. And then, like you said, we do have other people that she's fought that I train with. Okay. Yeah. So Misha Fodder, I just got done training with Misha like two weeks ago, not even. Um, and I definitely am always trying to find, you know, in this sport, you want any little niche that you can, oh, any yeah. little thing that you think is going to give you the edge, yeah. any information, detail, like she had oatmeal this morning, like, you know, <laughs> literally anything that you can do to mm-hmm. make sure that you have the edge. And so you do all of that, all of it, scouting, film, training with, you, do you know, self scout. Um, do, I mean, you don't, do you get what I'm saying by no, that? No, I don't. I, like, I, I, to what I think you mean is, do I find people that I need to bring into the camp? Well, or like it's a term in basketball and in football. It's like, um, Sometimes you, when you're being successful, you forget to look at your flaws. So then you have an objective mind or you have other people come in and tell you what you're not good at. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's called self-scouting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, so, like, that was one of the things. So Rick just was in Chicago, and then he had to go to uh, Vegas. He's in Florida. He's all over the place. But, like, one of our main things that we were talking about is we need to sit down and watch every single fight yeah. that I've ever had, mm-hmm. literally, from my amateur fights all the way to current day. Like, we need to sit down and watch all these fights. And that is something that um, we'll get to. I know he's busy with this show uh, tomorrow. So after that, he's going to come back to Chicago, and we're going to sit down. We're going to watch all these fights. But that's something that we do do. We watch their fights. We watch my fights. But now we're going to go do it all over again. Yeah, no, it's it's. It, it, I think as a professional athlete, and you understand that you're obviously successful, so I'm not trying to give you unsolicited advice. No, no, no. But it's good to look at what you're not good at with an open lens right. and, or you com- have somebody come in right. that is not afraid to offend you or your camp. Right. You're like, Hey, Juliana's got yeah. she dips her shoulder or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. On her right hook or whatever. Right. And then you can, f- cause the other, the other people are fucking looking at it. Right. So then if you can pick it up for yourself, they don't know that you're doing it. Right. You come up with the counter, but it's called self scouting. Yeah. It, it happens a lot in basketball and football. Um, it usually, the teams that are really successful to that don't do it get caught because they don't they don't look at the stuff that they're right. doing wrong even though they're still winning games or whatever. I don't have a yes man in a in a head coach. My guy it's Rick good. is literally a sharpshooter. He cuts to the chase immediately, mm-hmm. you know. So he's always you know on my ass, and it is something hard to have to listen to, you know, because sometimes you just want to be like, can you just give me a break? Yeah, dude, like, can you just like get off my ass? You know yeah. what I mean? And he's just like, no. 
No, well, all I the can't. great athletes, especially in individual sports, are allow themselves to be coached. I don't care if you, you know, we go into tennis or fucking golf. Tiger Woods, Roger Federer, they all had a fucking coach. You got to right. have somebody that tells yeah. you what to do. Yeah, and and that's you him, I mean? you know. But from day one, when I threw my very first punch to now, he's been in my corner, my ride or die. We've been working together now for 12, 13 years. Oh, that's awesome. And um, I trust him immensely, more than, you know, pretty much a lot. Like, it's like my parents and Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's uh, like a, you know. Uh, brother sister relationship, yeah, you know, where you can just lean he's family. on him. So family, that's awesome. Yeah, he's family, and he's never going to lie to me. No, oh, that's great. And he's always going to point me in the direction that I need to go, and yeah. he always has. He's only wanted me to be successful. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, um, you got this fight, this Nunez fight, because of the cancellation with Holly Holmes. So, like, kind of the theme of of this conversation is like opportunities have come your way, and it's kind of domino affected. So, like. Obviously, we were bummed out, and that May eighth got canceled. But then now you get the Nunez fight. Like so, like I don't know. I just don't know how to explain it. Like you try the cardio, kickboxing, and then you turn and you win your first fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, are you a fighter of destiny right now? Or what? I am. It is. <laughs> it's my time. Um, I I really feel like, oh man, this is gonna sound really weird, and I don't want to get like super. Uh, you know, religious on you or anything mm-hmm. like that. But, you know, I do believe in God and I do believe that God gives you these talents. These gives, he gives you these gifts. Mm-hmm. It's my job to give these gifts back to God. And I do that with my purpose of fighting. And mm-hmm. my purpose in life is to be a warrior and to be a warrior for God and, and for myself and, and to give these back to God. And so my job is to be the best version that I can. And I just feel like I have been putting in this time with Rick. We've been doing this for, you know, 13 years yeah. we've been doing this. And so it's to me, it's like, this is my time. This is what I've been doing. This is what it's all leading up to this moment, you know. And I believe in, you know, making your destiny by calling it, calling out your destiny, you know, saying to the universe, this is what's going to happen. Universe, can I have this? Universe says, yes. Okay, well, now I'm going to make sure that I do everything possible to make sure that I'm going to go and get this, you know, and I'm not trying to be like this person where it's like, well, if I just ask, I can receive. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, you got to go grab it. You got to go out there and get it. No one's going to hand you anything in this life, you know, and it's your job to go out there and, and, Give your talents back, you know, whether you mm-hmm. want to give it back to the world or give it back to a, your husband or whatever, whoever you want to give it back to. Me, I'm giving it to God. I'm giving it to the universe. And I'm saying, you know, I trust this path. I trust this path that I'm on. And and this is my destiny. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do everything in my power to make it so, you know, because no one is going to give it to me. That's you know? awesome. She wants to win, too, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Do you have, have you ever had any of your interactions with her beforehand or anything like that or? Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you should got the title fight from talking shit. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, I didn't get the title shot from talking shit. I'm speaking my truth. Yeah. I'm telling you what happened. You know, I was seven and no when you didn't want to fight me. You know, you beat Misha Tate that night and I beat Kat Zingano who freaking literally made you curl up in the fetal position and the ref had to come pull you off. You quit. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't quit. I beat her, you know, and she stomped the mud hole in you. So it's like, I'm not trying to talk shit. I'm just saying facts of what I saw. Speak of facts. Of what I saw and what I have done in my experience. You know, I I, I came back from the injury. I came back from having a baby. I've still been able to win at the highest level. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've dropped fights to Valentina and to Jermaine. But with that being said, you were struggling with those girls when you fought them. I was dominating both of them before I myself got caught. You know, for being a freaking dumbass. So these are little tweaks where I'm just like, if you just look at the fights, just look at the fights. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to talk shit, but I'm just speaking my truth of what has happened in my career and what I have seen and what I've experienced. And so people are like, oh, well, she only got. I'm like, no, I haven't got it from talking shit. I have earned every single inch in this sport and the only reason why I took a fight with Holly is because she already had another fight lined up okay well she beat that girl so and then Holly pulled out so what are you supposed to do exactly Exactly. what am I supposed to say no I don't want to fight for the championship I don't want what are you talking about this is what I got in here for I'm in here to fight the best in the world I think I'm one of the best in the world. Mm-hmm. You think you're one of the best in the world. Let's do let's it. Let's fucking do it. Yeah, let's go. Like, I don't understand. She's like, no, one more, one more. I don't get it. If I'm such a scrub and I haven't, you know, done this or that or have the accolades that you need and I suck so bad, why don't you want to fight me fight then? Me and 
you know, would wipe it, me off. Yeah, yeah it just yeah, exactly. if you've cleaned out the division, but I'm yeah. still standing, then what's the holdup? You know. And the other thing that ir- irritates me is she says, you know, oh, she needs to fight one more, one more. Why do you want to give me more time to go get better? Why don't you just, True. you know, put me out point. now? You know. Yeah. It's like she never. She's always a one more, one more, one more. You know. It's like you can't keep saying that anymore. At some point, you're gonna have to fight me, regardless if you were the championship or mm-hmm. the the champion. Regardless, this fight still needs to happen. Regardless, if there was a lineup of a bunch of girls and you weren't the champ, I'd still say you. Styles make fights, and True. our styles will collide and we will clash. And just looking at the history of it, you know, she's hasn't fought down at one thirty five. She uh, can't cut weight and dies to fight make that weight. And she gasses. I have the endurance to keep going and going and going. It's just, so, uh, you know, without not giving away your strategy, you think you could take her to deep water? Absolutely. And that's the plan. My plan is to let her know she was in a fist fight with Juliana Pena. That's awesome. Yes. And so I'm, I'm getting excited. And I'm not trying to get excited. Get I'm not excited. Try- We're well, excited I, in Spokane yes, to watch yes. you fucking It is fight. my time. It yes. is my time. It is. This is my destiny. And this is what I believe. And. I'm just literally working and grinding my ass off to make sure that I go out there and and get it. You've earned this opportunity and we've, you know, we've talked about it throughout the show, but just knowing you, just how much of a grinder you've always been. Um, You always have good energy about yourself. You're a real person. You know what I'm saying? Um, So I'm really excited for you. Thank you. you. Just being from Spokane and knowing you and, and seeing the things, like I said, doing a deep dive into your career with all the injury stuff and picking yourself up off the mat, being a good mom as you are, and being somebody of faith as well, who has a you know a destiny, a vision of of how they want to live their life the right way. Um, we're all rooting for you here. So thank um, you. You know, I think that's a good way to end the show. You've been fantastic. I thank you for your time. I know thank you're busy. You. Um, like I said, five oh nine. Fuck, right. let's go. Let's go, like, baby. We're, we're hyped. Um, I'm gonna be watching the fight. And thank again, you, you know. Um, God bless you, and thanks for coming on. Thank you, absolutely. It's been a pleasure, Adam. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode of The Perimeter, make sure to go check out Sack and Jack, featuring two Zag alums, one from the court, Robert Zachary, one from the booth, Jack Ferris. That's Sack and Jack. Find it wherever you listen to podcasts. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios and Mercedes of Spokane.